Sand now on our way east towards Mabu Babuyai Mabua Shaube. We're on our way to Mabua Shaube. Mabua Mashaube. Mabua Shaube. Mabua Shaube. Well then the Kalahari sand started off okay, but maintaining progress, probably at around about 35 k's an hour, which should see us at Mabua Shaube in six hours from where we started. It's been extremely wet here in the Kalahari and so we have this sea of grass through which everything shorter than a Chemsbok is utterly invisible. No doubt we have passed squadra of cheetah, leopard and lion today, all of them standing just a few inches off the road but in this very long grass. We've had our first uh, getting stuck. When I checked these earlier, they were, I thought, it was about 1.7 bar. This uh, fancy thing says nay. They were about 2 bar, which is way too high. And so this might explain why we got stuck here. About three minutes after the first disaster, the trailer opened. Luckily just two cutting boards flew out and not my wine glasses. Can you imagine your wine glasses had fallen out? Would you have done? <laughs> We left home, half past six, it's now nearly half past five, so 11 hours in the car, it's been long. Welcome to Le Xoloajo camp. Now we are going to check out the shit box. We have not done this before because we wanted you to share in the moment and we discovered what great foulness lives in the long drop. Take a deep breath. Using that. How to clean toilet. Sunlight liquid, own supply. You must bring your own. Five litre water canister supplied by the park. How kind. One toilet brush supplied by the park. Scrub and flush. Veneer, own supply to disinfect. Thank you. There's also a wasp that will sting you on the scrotum if you sit down there. I don't know, I think it looks all right. delightful road on which we drove today. There was a train smash. Pesto mixed with chocolate, mixed with pepper, mixed with salt, mixed also and totally universally with washing liquid. And there flour. is a very delicious 
used to be a very delicious tasting um, sort of chocolatey straw thing now covered in soap 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 the worst however has been the demise of this coffee plunger now that is going to try the tempers of the two of us luckily we still have the coffee filter and if we're very careful we will still be able to make good coffee and so we're not feeling particularly chipper and we're also very sure that absolutely everything from here on in is going to taste like soap, soap. Behold, Zerus Inorus, the Cape Ground Squirrel, a magnificent rodent. What we are doing here is trying to film some squirrels coming out of the burrow. I think that they're not going to come out with you sitting there. We could get a lot of sunburn while sitting here, but I've got to tell you, after yesterday's drive in the car. There they are. I'll take sitting here any day. I'll now attempt a tilt up. No, I won't. Squirrel's gone. This enchanting desert creature has not achieved the stardom of its famed meerkat colleague. A scandalous injustice which here we must rectify. Here is a typical social grouping of two lady squirrels, who we'll call Topsy and Helen, and their babies, Timmy and Harold. Their confiding nature indicates a vast experience of corruptive Homo sapiens. Indeed, Topsy was more easily bribed than a Nigerian policeman, an excellent characteristic for a film subject. Topsy and her besties are holed up at Le Sholoajo camp. And by holed up, I mean that Tops and Helen have excavated at least 20 burrows of a perfect size and shape in which to break the human ankle. These booby traps are fastidiously clean and protect we Timmy and Harold from cold, hot, slashing beak and a ripping claw. While partial to almonds and walnuts, when my wife isn't around, the squirrels forage for fresh buds, leaves, stems and roots. They are not always vegan, however, and occasionally sup on flesh from termite, beetle and cricket. Normally, the ground squirrel inhales its meal on sight, like my wife on spotting a packet of candy-speckled eggs in Woolworths. Sometimes, however, they put aside their millennial tendencies and delay gratification by burying their scoff for later. The Khalakhadi can be a f hot, with little noonday shade for a little creature. But look at this. Evolution has blessed our rodent friends with a parasol. Them's fancy talk for an umbrella. At dusk, Topsy and Helen gather fresh bedding for their little darlings. Like baby humans, however, Timmy and Harold don't like to go to bed when instructed. As soon as Mummy turns her back, they gamble about like crazed toddlers on speed. Until Mater threatens to stop their pocket money. A motherly kiss rectifies any ill feeling as darkness finally falls over the golden Khalakhadi. Caught in embrace indefinite Living in a grace that lives within How could it get much better than this? Much better than this? Oh, 
there is an enormous storm. We've got no battery left in the trailer. And if we come up towards the shower area, we will see that a crime was perpetrated by these cats. 